أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته سبحان الله I've just um, uh, I'm speaking to an empty masjid um, this is post Juma this lecture uh, سبحان الله I was on my way to the masjid and there was a major accident on the way and I make dua that no one was injured or, or, or harmed but uh, سبحان الله it was a serious accident it was so bad that I was unable to reach Juma on time and الحمد لله a few brothers uh, allowed me, we did a second Jumu'ah here, and this is the English uh, lecture, the post um, Jumu'ah English lecture, and this is for those who are following on, on, on WhatsApp or on, 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 on YouTube, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us. So we continue with our series, Dream Crafting, and as we mentioned that this Ramadan, we're trying to enhance our du'as and maybe inculcate certain habits that we can take with us for the, for the future. Remember the objective of Ramadan is not to do you know, a huge amount of, of, of ibadah, one suf and, 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 and it ends. And yes, when the last 10 nights of Ramadan come, we are going to push ourselves to our limit. But that's not sustainable. The reality is we'll never be able to uh, uh, wake up for three, four, five hours of tahajjud for those of subhanahu who can do that. You can maybe do it the last 10 nights, but throughout the year, it becomes very, very difficult. So the objective of Ramadan is to, is to inculcate certain habits that will stay with you for the rest of your life. And so, inshallah, we're going to talk about certain life-changing hacks, life-changing habits that you can put in, and subhanAllah, hopefully it will stay with you forever. The first thing is just a reminder that um, from next week, Wednesday, the odd nights of Ramadan will begin. These five odd nights are the highlights of your of our year. There's nothing bigger than that, than these five odd nights, because on that night, one of those five should be, inshallah, would be Laylatul Qadr. And whoever captures Laylatul Qadr, your entire life will be fixed. All your sins will be forgiven, and the reward of a thousand months, meaning a reward of a lifetime, will be given. So, one of those odd nights, inshallah, and we should basically try our best, try our best, subhanAllah, to make the most of those, those odd nights. And the best thing you can do is to perform salah, and if the, those who are unable to perform salah, well, as much salah as you can, for those who can't perform salah, like our sisters who are in the hayd, they shouldn't feel bad. Any time, just stay in ibadah, make dua, uh, um, and then inshallah that would be that would be uh, uh, um, for you so remember ramadan is a multiplier and the nabi uh, uh, the nabi sallam, uh, well it's not the nabi sallam, but the ulama have mentioned that doing any deed in the month of ramadan is multiplied exponentially it is multiplied exponentially the one who fasts one day in ramadan is better than fasting a thousand days or fasting a lifetime but think about that if you fasted every single day of your life from now until the day you die it will not equal one day of ramadan fasting and therefore any tasbih tahleel any dhikr any quran recitation one ran given in charity the reward is multiplied so much in this month of ramadan that it will not equal even if you spent a fortune we even mentioned subhanallah that the death of the shaheed is eclipsed by the reward of Ramadan. And so, subhanAllah, how amazing it is to do good deeds, and we have basically got half the month to go. So, we're going back to dua. How do you enhance your dua? There are certain special times that you can make dua. The, 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 one of the most mustajab times, the one of the times which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts duas, is in the farud salah before you take your taslim. So you, you, did, you, you sat down for your tashahud, you did your tashahud, just before assalamu alaikum, assalamu alaikum, at that time, crucial moment at the end of the salah you can ask and ask whatever it is yes it is best in this case to do it in Arabic because in, in salah we try to speak Arabic and so you make one of the du'as which are uh, mentioned in the sunnah Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana for example all encompassing du'a in sujood we know the Nabism says that the person is closest to Allah when he's in his sajida and between the adhan and the iqamah so for those mashallah who come to the masjid early or at home for example you don't have to even be in the masjid but before the adhan goes off, you already have your wudu, you wait for the adhan, and then you sit between the adhan and the iqama. That time is when du'as are accepted. That time is when du'as are accepted. While a person is fasting, and of course, just before he breaks his fast, just before you break your fast, this time, inshallah, no du'as are rejected at the time of iftar. And so take that 5-10 minutes before you break your fast to make the du'as of your heart, and then a special hour on Jumu'ah. And so subhanallah, if you look at the last hour, most people say the last hour of Jumu'ah, besides either the waqt of Jumu'ah or the last hour of Jumu'ah. So today is a Friday, that in Ramadan everything is multiplied. And on Fridays, everything is multiplied. Even to die on Friday is a blessing. And to be fasting on that Friday, and then to be waiting to break your fast in that hour when du'as are not accepted. We only have about five, uh, or four or five, Ram five Jumu'ahs um, in Ramadan. We basically have a few of them left. So make the most of this Friday to get as much of your du'as and your rewards uh, accepted. Ameen. So these are the times that make du'a 
accepted then there are certain things to enhance your dua and i think we spoke about some of these things about praising allah and using the appropriate name so think about the dua that you want and think about the corresponding name of allah of his asma'ul husna and then call upon him on that name ya razak give me rizq ya uh, ya mujib ya uh, ya wadud oh most loving put love in my marriage my marriage is falling apart ya wadud please grant us of your love and then you subhanallah and we'll talk about this that part of the dua, the way that you make dua, is you mention your good deeds that you have done for the for the for Allah's sake. It's not that you're doing a trade, but if you find um, the way the ambiya and the, the scholars or the pious people make dua, they would say, "Ya Allah, I have done this for you. I have submitted myself to you. It is uh, alhamd for you is the praise, and for you I do all these things. So please, Ya Allah, I submit to you. There's none worthy of worship but you. And then you make your dua. You almost make a tawassul." with your dua and we'll talk about this in our next story and we said making dua for others and making salawat on the nabi enhances your dua it's a very very interesting hadith interesting hadith which is we all know about about the three people in the cave so three people came to the cave and they spend uh, some time in there and then there was a, a a landslide or a rock slide and the cave completely got closed and they were stuck in there and as time went on they became worried look we're gonna die there's no way out so our only hope is to make dua and each one said we will make our own sincere dua to allah we will all make this dua and it's important to look at how they made dua one of them said all right the only way for for deliverance left is to make dua to allah and in the name of and to use to mention to allah ya allah i did some good deed so please if you accepted that deed then help me in this situation and thereupon each one now each one had to make their own dua the one said oh my lord my parents were very old i used to offer them their nightly drink of milk before uh, and i used to make sure that they ate first before my family before my children and the other members of my family and so he would always make sure his parents ate first then one day i went uh, uh, i was away f and i came home late and um and when i came back i found that my parents were asleep so he always made sure my parents eat first then my kids so when he came back the parents were sleeping already and he hadn't given them the supper and so while i had the milk uh, uh, i had milked the animals and i brought them they drink um, they were asleep but i did not want to distribute it to my family members until my parents had the full while my kids were crying and my family was uh, uh, in need um they weren't starving to death but just out of his his, his ikram of his parents um he said i waited until they woke up basically and then i gave my parents and then i gave my family um while the children cried of hunger at my feet when they woke up they had their drink and so he says oh allah now this is this is the part of the dua you make the the, the deed you say oh allah if i did this thing only for your pleasure i did this thing there's no reason why i did it except that i wanted to seek your pleasure i wanted to honor my parents for your pleasure then do relieve us of this distress uh, that this rock so now ya allah you assist me thereupon and then the rock moved a little bit but it was it only moved so much that no, nobody could get out of this the, the situation so then the second man made a dua and he says oh allah i had a cousin whom i loved very very deeply and passionately he had a lady a female cousin and he wanted to be with her and he constantly tried to approach her he constantly tried to uh, 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 um, uh, you know uh, tried to seduce her and she continuously rejected him and years would go on and he was madly in love with this woman and then eventually this lady fell un under some hard difficult times and she you know couldn't make ends meet so she came to him and said look um, if you can help me out i will give you whatever you want and he said okay deal and he gave her what she wanted and then he said now come it's your turn and they were in the moment just about to commit zina he was between her thighs basically and just before he was about to do it she said like you know don't do this um she obviously wasn't didn't want to do this. she was out of desperation and she then said that she pleaded be 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 scared of allah and do not break my virginity unlawfully and at that moment you know you know he he had his conscious kicked in whereupon he said i moved away from her despite the fact that i desired her the most passionately this lady i loved so much this is what i've been dreaming about and in that moment when she said fear allah and nothing could stop me I basically walked away and so he said and i let her keep her i let her keep the money i had given her i didn't tell her give me back the money and i let her go and so then he says oh allah if i did this thing seeking only your pleasure the only reason i stopped was because i thought of you ya allah then please help me in this situation and so point number one the first man made dua out of his love and his honor for his parents the second one out of a sin that he stood away from so maybe there was a time when you could have committed a sin and you said you know what i'm not going to do that I'm not gonna subhanallah the whole day during Ramadan, you're passing by all these restaurants, all these things to eat. Ya Allah, the only reason I didn't have a sip of water or had something to eat was because of my uh, 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 my devotion to you. And again the rock moved a little bit. And then the last man said, and again we summarize quickly, he said, I had a servant that worked for me. And when he did his job finished, 
I wanted to pay him his wages, but then the man disappeared. And so I had the money of this guy and he was standing there. And then I took this money and I started to do business with it and that money grew. I bought animals and those animals uh, procreated and then this little money became a fortune, became a huge fortune. You know, he did some good investment. And then this man came back like many, many years later and he said, you still owe me my salary of that time. So the man said, you know what, everything you see here is your salary. So the man says, are you making jokes of me? So he said, no, I took your money and invested it, but actually it wasn't my money, it was your money. And so the man said, look, you can take what you want. And the man says, subhanAllah, this worker, he took everything. He didn't take, leave one cent behind for me. He actually took everything and he left. And so the man, the, the, the man who was honest, he says, Ya Allah, I only did this. So he says, he, the man took everything, not sparing anything for me. Oh Allah, if I did this thing only for your pleasure, why? Because no one knew. No one knew. He didn't have to disclose it. He could have just given the man his 10 rand. But he said, look, all of this is yours. A fortune. Who would have, subhanAllah, who of us would have done this? And so he, uh, he says, Ya Allah, in this situation, please help me. And the rock moved a little bit and then all of them could exit. So much fawaid here about the good deeds you do. So mention your good deeds to Allah. Say to Allah, I did this thing for your sake, purely for your sake. By your mercy, you allowed me to do it. And also what's beautiful in here, uh, 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 not explicitly mentioned, sometimes the situation is so big that my sincere dua is not going to be enough. I need the dua of my brothers as well and sisters to make dua. So sometimes it requires the collective dua, the collective sincere dua for things to change. So issues like Palestine or whatever it might be, it requires all of us to make dua collectively. So now we're going to talk about certain life-changing, simple deeds, and we call it shortcuts to Jannah. And uh, um, I encourage for those of you, usually very few people actually read the slides, they just listen to the audio, but I think this time it's important. Take the PDF, look at it, and choose one or two of these life-changing, simple deeds that give massive reward. So, number one, the easiest reward, subhanAllah, is to have a sincere niyyah. As, the, as we know, that a niyyah, just an intention, can make a mundane task an act of ibadah. Before you go to sleep at night, you know, five, six, seven hours of sleeping, there's no reward or punishment. But just before you sleep, you say, Ya Allah, I'm sleeping because I need to give the haq of my body so that I may be refreshed for your sake. Ya Allah, I'm going to work, I'm going to sit in traffic and doing all this difficulty. Why am I doing it? So that I can feed my family and support and to, to honor my commitments. Now sitting in traffic, now sitting eight hours of work, uh, sitting at the desk for eight hours, going to school, all of this becomes an act of worship. You may make the niyyah, Ya Allah, I want to be half of the Quran. I want to be a haji. And you are sincere when you make that dua, even if you don't get this, subhanAllah, on qiyamah, you get the reward for it. So it's a, it's a freebie that Allah is giving you. Just make that sincere, Promise to Allah, Ya Allah, if you allow me, I would want to be half with Al-Quran. If you allow me, I would do whatever, I would build masjids if you, uh, to give me rizq. And then those rewards are for you. Ten seconds to Jannah. Look at this, subhanAllah, such an easy thing. Ten seconds and you can guarantee your Jannah. The Nabi says, whoever recites Ayatul Kursi, immediately after the Fard Salah, so five times a day, at the end of every Salah, don't jump up and run away. Don't take your phone out. Recite Ayatul Kursi. There will be nothing between him and Jannah except his death. The person who does this, so do this habit. Take, don't take all these things. Take one and say, this is the one I'm going to do. I'm not going to let a single walk go by except I'll recite Ayatul Kursi and your place in Jannah, inshallah, is guaranteed. The Nabi says, whoever makes salawat upon me, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa just doing that, that's what, two, three seconds, then Allah sends salawat on you ten times. Not the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa Allah makes salawat on you. Allah mentions your name ten times and, and Allah removes ten sins and He raises you up ten darajat. Ten darajah doesn't mean he gives you ten rewards. It means, so as we know in Jannah there are levels. There's the Bishop Labors of Jannah and there's the Bishop Court of Jannah. Allah raises you up a suburb, ten suburbs, every time you make salawat on the Nabi Sallallahu Being led to Jannah, look at this beautiful hadith. The Nabi says, whoever enters the morning, whoever starts his day, saying, Raditu Billahi Rabba, I'm pleased with Allah as my Lord, Wabil Islam Dina, and I'm pleased with Islam as my religion, Wabi Muhammadin Nabiya wa Rasulah, and I'm pleased with Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi as my Nabi. Then, what, what do you get for that? Again, two, three seconds. What do you get in return? Whoever does this daily, then the Nabi says, I am your guarantor. I promise you, I will take you by the hand on the day of Qiyamah and I will walk you into Jannah, subhanAllah. I will take you by the hand and enter you into Jannah. SubhanAllah, subhanAllah. The, perhaps the best dhikr one can possibly make, so if you're sitting in traffic or you've got some 
and it doesn't take you more than 10 minutes to do this. This is perhaps the best dhikr you can make each day. It is the dhikr of the day of Arafah. When Aisha asked the Nabi Sallam, what can I say on the day of Arafah? The Nabi says, this dua, this dhikr, la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la, la wal mulku wal hamd wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. Or oh, you can add yuhi wa yumit wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. La ilaha, there is none worthy of worship besides Allah, the one, the only, the unique, the one who controls all of creation. La wal mulk, to him belongs all of creation. Wa la hamd, and all the praises for him. Wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir, and he has power over all things. Whoever says this 100 times a day, then what do you get your reward? You'll get the reward of freeing 10 slaves. Side note, what is the reward of freeing 10 slaves? The freeing of one slave is a guarantee, get out of jail free, card in Jahannam. So people will go to Jahannam, meaning they have a bad life. But if they free the slave, it will be one body substituted for one. By saying this, you get 10 slaves that you have been freed. And 100 good deeds will be recorded on you. And 100 sins will be erased from you. And you will be guarded that day from all evil harms until the evening. And no one can beat you. Now, says, there's no, no one that can do a better deed than you, except one who recites this more than 100 times. And similarly, the one who recites it at night, he gets protected. So many things in this one dhikr. Another simple way to Jannah, the Nabi says, there are two easy, easy things, two freebies, that no Muslim man does those things, but he will enter Jannah in a very simple and easy way. In fact, the Nabi is saying, this is an easy way to get to Jannah, but most people neglect it. What is this? He said, you should say Subhanallah 10 times after each Salah, and Alhamdulillah 10 times after each Salah, and Allahu Akbar 10 times after each Salah. And the Nabi says, counting on his fingers, he said, that makes it 150 on the tongue. Right, so the, uh, it is multiplied. It is multiplied uh, uh, 50 times, and so therefore it is 150, and 1,500 times on the scale. Right, and similarly, we know that so whoever makes these pujis, we call it 10 times or 30 times, or before you go to sleep, the Nabi says whoever makes the pujis after salah and before you go to sleep, 30 times Subhanallah, 30 times Alhamdulillah, 30 times Allahu Akbar. Then, or 33 times, then all your sins are forgiven, even if it is like the foam of the sea. All these sins are forgiven. Um, whoever glorifies, right? All your sins are forgiven. The Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also says that he, a person who recites a certain dhikr, each of the following three types of people have a guaranteed protection from Allah. Allah gives them a guarantee. Three types of people. Who are these three people? That if he lives, he is taken care of, and if he dies, he'll enter Jannah. He gets a promise from Allah. Who are these three people? The one who enters his house was saying, Assalamu Alaikum to his family. Very simple and easy. The others are a bit more difficult. The one who goes to the masjid regularly and the one who goes out fi sabilillah, fighting jihad. Now the jihad part is difficult. Going to the masjid for every walk is difficult. But to come home after work and say, Assalamu alaikum to my wife, my kids, my parents, to be, take a guarantee that if you live, Allah will protect you. And if you die, you get to Jannah. Simple, simple one. Sayyidu al-Istighfar. Istighfar obviously is that type of dua where you ask Allah to repent for your sins. Ya Allah, forgive me, have mercy upon me. But there's a special dua called the Sayyid, the leader of all the istighfar, the leader of all the duas of forgiveness. How does that dua go? Oh Allah, you, Allahumma anta rabbi. Oh Allah, you are my Lord. Khalaqtani. Uh, uh, you created me. Uh, uh, in, uh, uh, Allahumma anta rabbi. La ilaha illa anta. Oh Allah, you are my Lord. Uh, there is none worthy of worship but you. Anta khalaqtani. That you created me. Wa ana abduka. And I am your slave. Wa ala ahdika wa wa'dika mastata'atu. And I am upon as best I can. As best I can, ya Allah. I'm trying to fulfill my, my, my duty and my covenant to you. bika min sharri ma sana'atu. Oh Allah, I confess all my sins to you that I've done. And I ask your protection. I, I make no excuses for my sins. All my sins, Ya Allah. I don't make any excuses, but I don't confess to anyone. I confess them to you. And I make mention of your favor upon me, Ya Allah. I, I acknowledge the good that you've given me. All that I have is because of you. Oh Allah, so please forgive me. I have come to you confessing my sins, so forgive me. So none forgives the sins except you. So maybe none of us are mem have memorized the dua. Maybe take this as your Ramadan hack. And I'm gonna, you know, I won't uh, do much at the end of Ramadan, but I'm gonna memorize this dua. What do you get if you recite this dua? The Nabi says, if anybody recites this dua during the day, and he's sincere in what he says, and he dies that day, before the evening, then he will be from the people of Jannah. Guaranteed Jannah. You recited this dua and you died on that day, you enter Jannah. And if anybody recites it in the evening with Iman, then he's guaranteed he's a person of Jannah. So this is a guaranteed ticket to recite this and you die on that day or in the evening. So after every Fajr and after every Maghrib to recite this and your ticket is, 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 is uh, uh, inshallah, going to Jannah. The Nabi Sallam was a huge, huge fan, was a huge supporter of these shortcuts to Jannah. 
if you could get to Jannah in the simplest way possible, he encouraged that. Take the easy way to Jannah. And this is very clear in a, in a, in a, in a, in a hadith where we all know where the Nabi Sallam got up and he went to the masjid to perform Fajr and our mother, his wife Juwairiyah, um, was performing Salah. When he came back, the Nabi Sallam, the word time, she was sitting in the exact same spot. She hadn't moved. And the Nabi Sallam was surprised and he said, have you sat like that since I left? You haven't moved, making dhikr and reciting Quran. And she said, yes, you know, to make it closer to Allah. So the Nabi Sallam smiles to her and he says, you know, I have recited four simple words times three, did it three times when I left you. And it has outweighed all the hours that you spend in, 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 in ibadah. The simple dua I have recited, you know, it is more rewarding all these hours you spend in salah, so in, 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 in dhikr. What is this dhikr? Subhanallah bi adada khalqihi, praise be to you, Ya Allah, to the extent, to the number of your creations, وزينة عرشه and praise be to you Allah in accordance with the weight of the arsh of Allah ومداد كلماته and praise be to you يا الله to the extent of the ink it would take all the ink in the world to write your words ورضا نفسي and praise to you يا الله to the extent that you have pleasure with yourself according to you your self pleasure whoever recites this four times سبحانه in the morning it is as if though he spent the entire morning فجر في الظهر in ibadah we also mention part of our series on on the barzakh we know that the person who recites Surah Mulk every single day becomes his life habit. Then he will be protected from the punishment of the Qabr, the squeezing of the Qabr, the uh, angels punishing a person in the Qabr, the darkness of the Qabr. Surah Mulk is the best defender for one in the uh, Adab of the Qabr. Again, Surah Mulk maybe takes us five, ten minutes to recite. Perhaps every evening before we go to sleep, we should make that niya. I'm going to recite Surah Mulk. Not a single night will go by except that I will recite Surah Mulk. So those are all adhkar and du'as and Quranic recitations. Then there are, and we, uh, this next uh, section, and um, not, too, not too much left, salah hacks. So part of Ramadan, remember the Nabi Sallallahu says, whoever fasts the month of Ramadan with iman, all your sins are forgiven. Now, puasa or fasting might be difficult. You know? You're not of those who say uh, 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 they have a beautiful fasting. They are grumpy and, you know, that's... But then for another person, salah is easy. And you can get to Jannah through performing your salah in the evenings. But who can make salah every, from basically from Maghrib to Fajr? We can't spend hours and hours in salah. If we're lucky, we come to Taraweeh. And if we're very, very lucky, we get a few, a half an hour, or an hour of Tahajjud. But that's basically it. How do I spend the whole night in salah? Don't worry. There are always shortcuts to get things. So one of the ways in the day you can get the reward of a Hajj and an Umrah every single day. Not just in Ramadan, but especially in Ramadan. What is this? This, uh, this deed. The Nabi says, whoever makes Fajr Salah in congregation, so the men, you have to come to the masjid, you can't do it at home. The ladies, of course, you can make Salah at home, no problem. And when it's done, when you finish with Fajr, you remain in the masjid. The men stay in the masjid, the ladies, you stay on the musalla where you were making Salah, and you just sit there and make dhikr for about an hour and 15 minutes until the sun rises. It's called Ishraq. The sun has fully risen. And then he gets up and he makes two raka'as, two raka'as sunnah. If he does that, so you spent an hour in salah, an uh, hour in ibadah. What is the reward? The Nabi says, you get the reward of a hajj and umrah. Taman, taman, taman. He emphasizes complete, complete, complete. The full reward of the hajji going to Arafah, subhanAllah. This is every single day. Every single day, this is available for us. The reward of the martyr. So in our series on Qiyamah, the Nabi says, the, the shaheed, the person who dies fi sabilillah, will be the highest category. The highest category after the Anbiya and the Siddiqs. The Siddiq is a very special category. Very, very few people reach it. Abu Bakr and Maryam, they reach that. They are almost like just one step below the Anbiya. But the next category is the Shuhada, the one who dies fi sabilillah. And the Shaheed, what are the rewards he gets? Number one, all his sins are forgiven. Number two, no punishment in the Qabr. Number three, Qiyamah is made easy. Number four, he will intercede for other people. Number five, he will, he, in the barzakh, he would not be confined to his cupboard. He gets to, to roam around uh, the arsh, the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, it's a very difficult thing to die as a shaheed, to die fi sabilillah. Well, the Nabi says, whoever makes salatul duha, that's two raka'as in the morning, f between the word and fajr, between fajr and the word, two raka'as. And you fast the three middle days of the month, 13th, 14th, and 15th, and you make witr every single night, even when traveling. So you, you combine with these things, you make Salat al-Duha, and you fast the three days of the month, and you make Witr, then you will be given the status of a shaheed. You will be given a status of a shaheed. Subhanallah, all your sins forgiven, direct ticket to Jannah, no punishment in the Qabr, all those things, just inculcating these three simple, simple daily habits. How does one perform salah the entire night. There's two ways in which you can perform salah the entire night, especially in Ramadan. The first way is 
whoever comes and he performs salah with the imams or the sahaba, remember they made taraweeh with the Nabi Sallam. Then the Nabi Sallam uh, stopped making taraweeh. And he came back, and so it was ad hoc where he led them in salah. So one of those nights when he came to make salah and taraweeh and he led them, the sahaba were very excited. They said, Ya Rasulullah, make a special salah, man. Let it be the whole night, for example. We don't want it to end. So the Nabi says, no need for that. Whoever makes salah with the imam, and the, even if it's short, and the imam finishes, you stay in the jama'ah, then Allah writes for you that the whole night you stood in salah. So maybe for those brothers, alhamdulillah, there's a whole debate about 20 and verses 8. Maybe now in the last 10 nights, for the sake of I want the entire night to be written in salah, stay with the imam, stay with the imam until he finishes with it and everything. Stay with the jama'ah, that half an hour, one hour, the whole night is written for you. The other way of also getting, that's one way. The other way of guaranteeing your salah to be, the whole night to be in salah, is whoever, it's not just in Ramadan, whoever comes to the masjid and makes isha'i in jama'ah, then half the night is he, like he stood the whole six hours in salah. And whoever makes fajr in jama'ah, the other half of the night. And so, subhanAllah, those who have a habit of coming to the masjid for fajr and, 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 and isha'i to the masjid, their whole life was that they, they will stand before Allah. Ya Allah, I spend every single night in Qiyamul Layl. 50, 30, 40, 50 years Qiyamul Layl, subhanAllah, um, for the whole night. Oh, what a great reward. And so these are simple, easy things to do to get maximize your reward and then the last point to make is of course sadaqa sadaqa so we spoke about duas and dhikr we spoke about salah and now just a, a sadaqa and this is why we mention it in ramadan because from a financial perspective when you put a one rand you want to put it in that investment that will give the maximum maximum reward ramadan multiplies as we said allah any rand you give fi sabilillah allah multiplies it as a minimum times 700 the Quran says, as a minimum, Allah gives you 700. But in Ramadan, He multiplies it exponentially. There's no limit to the, the amount of sadaqah, the amount of reward. That's why those who have zakah, they give it in Ramadan. If you have any charity to give, give it now in the month of Ramadan, especially on a Friday. So now in the, on the Fridays, and maybe, you, you know, don't delay it because you don't know if you're going to live, but give your sadaqah now in the month of Ramadan if you have a one rand. And that's why the ulama says every single day in Ramadan, give one rand, at least one rand, because you don't know it might coincide with Laylatul Qadr. It might coincide with Laylatul Qadr. Sadaqah will prevent sickness. Sadaqah will prevent calamity. The Nabi says, Sadaqah removes sin. Sadaqah gets your du'as answered. And a Sadaqatul Jariyah will continue to benefit you even after you die. So all these things I mentioned, you can only make Ayatul Kursi while you're alive. You can only make Fajr and Isha'i while you're alive. So these great deeds, they come to an end when you die, except Sadaqah. Sadaqah has had one ability to continue to generate your rewards even after you die. So on that note, inshallah, please give as much as we can. May Allah grant us sincerity and accept from us. May we inculcate one or two of these things in our life. And may Allah accept from us. Shukran so much for your patience. Wa sallallahu Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa rasaneen. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.